So as a preface to this coming video, I want to make a, uh, just kind of known how I'm holding this sword. Now, I'm not holding at the end right here like this. I'm not doing this. Okay? Not at the end right here. And I'm not all the way at the top right here. Doing the quote-unquote hammer grip. I'm doing a variation of the French style. I think that's what it is. And a variation of this. Interchangeably. Depending on whichever is most comfortable. Okay? Example. If I have this like this don't have as much control over the actual sword especially if it's heavy okay if I have it like this a hammer grip it's very tiresome on my fingers to keep gripping it like that so I have a little hybrid between that far away grip and the hammer grip and you might notice the index finger here what I use the index finger for is literally to guide the sword and the edge so that the edge alignment is flawless. And I've tested this with a cutting bottle and uh, you know, it's, um, it's harder than you think it is. You know, you can't just, uh, unless the sword is really sharp, cutting bottle, especially like a crystal geyser one, you know, with those huge ones, it's harder than you think. <laughs> so pretty much uh, enjoy this video and just keep in mind to you know guide the edge perfectly in a line you want to guide with your index finger okay so that's how I hold it and enjoy ciao ragazzi my name is Arthur Wu and this video is going to be about pretty much maneuvering a somewhat heavy blade single-handed at least so this is the 1830 Napoleon Saber by Cold Steel and um, you know it's a uh, little over two pounds it's got a you know decently thick spine but most of all it's long and that makes it just kind of uh, a little heavier than most most swords you usually want to use so the reason why I like this sword so much is because the point of balance actually pretty close to the handguard and uh, it just makes it a lot more a little more comfortable than a lot of swords to use so regardless of its weight I still kind of like it so this video though is gonna be this kind of um how to really effectively wield something that's a little heavier than you would otherwise you know a little heavier in the hand than you would otherwise just kind of expect to use. So, most videos I see people using this sword, like a, like let's say they're cutting fruit or something, I always see them cut it like this. And their whole body kind of follows the sword because, well, it's, you know, it's 34 and a half inches and that's, with the hilt included, that's a little like probably one meter long, one meter long sword. So, I just wanna go over just kind of how to move this and the tricks that I use to really effectively do that. <laughs> so, we're gonna start with that, uh, I guess, six figure, um, or maybe six stroke saber drill that you see in like every YouTube channel. Okay, so, you start with this position right here. I'm not a big fan of doing that numbers thing. I didn't memorize it. I feel like it's somewhat pointless. So, I'll just demonstrate it. Now that is a conventional way. And I had to uh, tense up my shoulder here because with the cavalry saber, which this sort of is, it's a lot harder to just stop the blade than it is an infantry sword. So, all right, 
Now that was one way to do it, you know, this kind of straight slashing, <laughs> um, I guess cumbersome bludgeon sword style, okay? So, not a big fan of using it that way. Whew, all right. So, the way I like to do it is more kind of uh, similar to using the momentum of the sword and having that do the heavy duty work, okay? Now, pretty much the principle behind what I just did then, this, and mixing that in with an actual Molinaire or something, is that the way that you do that is uh, basically you use the weight of the hilt and just kind of like the reliability of that kind of counterweight to help move the sword instead of you know and having to stop the sword with your wrist strength all you do is use that counterbalance of moving simply moving that sword hilt up and you will see that this literally achieves a chopping motion I'm not trying to chop at all okay so when you do that saber drill and you're going you want to lead like this and at the end of it You want to have your wrist come up. And you might notice that when my wrist does come up, the sword conveniently returns to a hanging guard position. And this comes right back forward as well. So, I'm going to talk about just kind of a uh, how the upward cuts go, okay? So, you want to use that same principle of that counterbalance of the guard, the hilt, whatever you want to call it, into effect when you're cutting diagonally up, okay? So it's very simple that, you know, downward diagonal cuts you're aiming at the collarbone, etc., face, you know, neck, whatever. But this, you're aiming somewhere you might not really expect, okay? So, down by the legs right here is, or are, the femoral arteries. So, somewhere around here, if you cut it <laughs> really deep, you know, you get a really lucky shot in here you will cause intense crazy bleeding and just you know cutting at someone's legs like this even with like a knife coming in close and stabbing into someone's leg like that you see in the movies people often just walk away from it or stagger away from it but so much bleeding will cause someone to pass out in like 20 seconds or something you know what i'm saying not only that but cause a lot of pain too so with this you're not aiming to go really high with this cut, okay? You're not trying to do that. You could, if you can bring your sword back with that variation, maybe this one, but what you're trying to do, you're trying to cut low, okay? And so, you're going to use a little bit of momentum generating the movement of this sword to cut in there but once once you reach your target you know your pretend target right here you're going to use that I guess uh, is it fulcrum that levy aspect that counterbalance principle and move the sword back okay
You see that? Just a flick. Okay, so when you see that done in uh, application to that sword drill, it's going to look like this. Okay, so once the sword has passed out here, you don't need to keep the integrity of the cut. All you got to do bring it back for the next one, okay? Now, with, uh, with the next part, this part, the horizontal cuts. Yes, you can cut like this as if you're cutting like 15 water balls at once, but there's a kind of a way that I borrow from Chinese Wushu, the Chinese broadsword. And uh, pretty much, and that is simply the same as everything I just said before. <laughs> Basically, once you pass your target, you wrap around, okay? It's like when you're a little kid, you're walking through a bunch of like uh, weeds or something, and you're just hitting it with a stick, right? And that is the exact same kind of principle behind this. Except you want to make sure that when you do this, you align the edge so that it actually will cut instead of hitting the back of the blade right here against someone's side or something and not doing any damage. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so just like that. So, in conclusion, you saw what it was like beforehand. Now, you're going to see my version of the military saber drill, okay? With a cavalry saber. So, I'm just going to start from a hanging guard because it's easiest to transition into a cut. Okay? Now I expended a lot less energy doing that. With a little bit more energy directed, you know, into my muscles near my wrist and forearm, but it's not as much as it would have taken to do this. Okay? This is extremely tiring and leaves you so open. Alright, so down from the side, the ideal way in my opinion to do this. Yeah, so basically that's just a one way to do that military saber drill. Now I'm going to speak about, you know, thrusts and stuff, okay? Now a lot of times, you know, it's ideal to do a lunge kind of thrust like this, right? So, that is fine and dandy, but there's also things called draw cuts, and, and that's simply doing this, and you basically use the speed of the blade, momentum, and the weight to generate a sliding cutting motion along, along probably the person's Oh my god, I forgot the word. Collarbone, or neck, or face. Okay? Now, the way you do this is simply the same thing as I said before. You use the weight of the handle, the pommel, the, the guard, as a counterbalance. And this, in turn, aids in a cutting motion. Now, all you gotta do is act as if you were gonna stab someone a little above the target that you would usually stab and
trimmed this. If you don't manage to cut them, you will hit them with the pointy end. <laughs> so, you might have seen me do something in, earlier in the video, which is kind of a variation of this and sort of a pull a shaver technique of hitting on the back like this with the blade. So, one of the counters to <clears throat> horizontal strike is to parry with hanging guard and then come in with the back side on the top of the forehead or the back of the head or whatever. So that is one of the things you can do, okay? So <clears throat> boom. Now what I do, what I find is pretty sneaky as well, is kind of applying a sidestepping kind of motion, okay? And instead of hitting somebody's head with the back, the blunt edge, you instead flip the blade on its side and you turn it into a thrust. Kind of like this, except like that. And this also requires you to simply lift up the handle, okay? So those are just a few techniques, you know, to uh, add to your arsenal of whatever you're doing. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the Cold Steel Napoleon Saber, and I'm Arthur Wu. And I just make these videos for fun. And I hope you guys enjoy them. Like and subscribe and share the love.